Hey guys, my name is Adam from Encounter Wargaming, and today we are going to unbox. Triumvirate of the Primarch, Gulliman Rises. Oh, so cool, so excited to show this to you guys. And here we have it guys, part three of the Gathering Storm, where we have the return of a Primarch to 40k. And so you saw me unbox part one of the Gathering Storm, the Triumvirate of the Imperium with Celestine and Call and Greyfax. Um, but here we have the man, the legend himself, uh, Raboot Gulliman and uh, Cypher and Grandmaster Voldus here. So really excited to open this up. So first off let's just scan the box because the boxes are works of art in themselves. So there they are, all three of them, recommended paint schemes and all that, which is pretty cool. And uh, alright, let's just not waste any more time. Let's jump right in. Now I'm hoping there's going to be another piece of cool artwork in here so I can add it to my wall of cool artwork. So let's see. Is this another sleeve? Yes, it is. So there we go. Pull that sleeve off. Really cool piece of artwork there. <clears throat> Continuing on, let's get into this box. Ooh, as requested. Really cool piece of artwork. Definitely going to add that to the wall. All right. Man, they just look super badass. That is awesome. All right, nice, uh, nice card piece of art. That's going on the wall. And some instructions. Pretty cool. It looks like it's got rules in there, which is nice for us. So let's we'll go through that right after, and let's get to the model part. So it looks like one. Two sprues for Gilliman. We'll take a look in detail. We got uh, there's the Grandmaster himself, Mr. Voldus, and everybody's favorite, the man, the legend, Cipher. All right, and then a few bases for everybody. So let's take a look at them each one at a time. So here is Mr. Cipher coming in hot at 190 points. Let's have a uh, let's have a close up of the sprue, shall we? So get some focus for y'all pretty sweet with his plasma pistol there stuck up in the air loving this cloak looks like his chest is just flipped around here pretty cool how the hood is like built into this and then connects on the other side with the hood that's already in there somehow they're getting really good at doing this they must be using the computer or whatnot to design these and splice them apart and there's the big sword. Is it the lion sword? This is the question, isn't it? So, oh, look at that hand. So detailed. So cool. All right, let's put that aside. We can gawk later. Let's check out some rules. So, Women's skill 7 plus skill 10. Holy smokes. So hitting on 2s, rerolling to 2s again. Strength numbers 4, 3 wounds, typical uh, Space Marine character stats. Initiative 8, though, that is not typical. 3 attacks, leadership 10, and uh, save is 3 up, so that's pretty typical. Um, he's an Eternal Warrior. He's got Fleet and Hit and Run. Independent character, he's got Infiltrate, pretty sweet, and Shrouded, so it'll be tough to take this guy down when he's in cover for sure. Digging that, he does have assault grenades. Um, cool. So he cannot be the warlord. Um, in addition, the leadership characteristic of the warlord of an army that includes this guy is negative one. That's kind of interesting. Um, so, blazing weapons. He can shoot both of his pistols twice in his shooting phase, or he can fire them once um, and still make a run move. That's kind of neat. Uh, when he takes overwatch, he uses full ballistic skill. Uh, in the assault phase, half of Cypher's close combat attacks rounding down are strength 4, AP 5, and all the remaining ones are strength 7, AP 2. So it looks like he even uses pistols in close combat and gets off some plasma shots in combat there too. Um, Alright, so uh, Divine Protection. 
If there's an enemy model within D6 inches of Cypher when he loses his last wound or is removed from play for whatever reason, um, he's captured alive. Uh, or if there's no any model, enemy models um, when he's removed his casualty, then he's made a miraculous escape. So I guess this is to show the fact that Cypher just doesn't die. He's never, he's never considered to be a casualty for the purposes of awarding victory points. That is quite interesting, is it not? Um, typical uh, pistol stats, except for his bolt pistol is slightly longer range. So, cool. There's Cypher, guys. Um, let's move on to Mr. Valdis. Here he is. A little more pricey than Cypher, coming in at 240 um, points. And let's check out the sprue and then see if you're getting your money's worth at 240 points. So, alright, pretty sweet, super nice detail, just crazy how they can, look how this is all attached, huh. I guess that means when he's fully assembled though, there's some nice contact points for everything to hold together on. Pretty cool, loving this hammer, and his head. very stoic looking old man. Alright, let's put him aside there and uh, check out some rules. So I'll get right in there. Okie dokie, so weapon skill 6 and ballistic skill 5, strength toughness 4, wounds 3, initiative 5, 4 attacks, leadership 10, 2 plus save, probably standard for a grandmaster. Um, let's hope he's got some funky stuff. Um, psycho grenades, pretty cool, iron halo. Uh, special rules, independent character, the ages, no, no fear, preferred enemy, demons, psycho mastery level 3, and purity of spirit. Cool. Um, doesn't say he has, what is his weapon? Uh, ah, it'll be this guy, I guess, the relic of a titan. Anyway, uh, lore master, he knows, um, one more power than is normal for his match level, so he knows four powers, um, but it must be selected from Demonology Sanctic, which I'm sure we don't have a problem with. Um, tells you his list of spells, and then his hammer. So, typical Thunder Hammer with concussive, but it's also force, Demon Bane, and a specialist weapon. So there you go. Pretty sweet. Looking uh, looking like we're going to see him maybe in a couple, uh, in a couple Grey Knight armies. Um, doesn't have that badass storm shield that our other favorite Granite Grandmaster does. So, well, we'll see. All right, now, last but not least, let's get to the Primarch himself. All right, and here is the man, the legend, Reboot Gulliman. So, coming in hot, 350 points. Pretty cheap. It's not. Uh, it's not like Magnus. It's 700. So, uh, let's see what we get for 350 points. Um, before that, let's eyeball the sprue. So there's that uh, fire sword that's, everyone's trying to figure out how to paint that. Cool, looks like his greaves, all his armor's plates come separate. There's that fist, looking pretty crazy. Shoulder pad on one side. Alright, other screw. Very elaborate base over here. Pretty sweet. Some, uh, I don't know what you call these. Things with, things with fire in them. Dead chaos dude on his base as well. Looks like uh, the head of the eagle. Pretty sweet. His, uh, his famous heavy bee. See what it does if it has some special rules. I think it's got rending and stuff. And then his, uh, his body options. Different head options up here. I'm probably going to go with the open head. I guess you could magnetize it, right? Why not? Yeah. Cool. Very nice, very nice. Very slick looking backpack. And whatever this is, these wings that kind of float over his head. Ah, so cool. Alright, let's get into these rules here. So 
So for 350 points, what's the basic stat line? Weapon skill 9. Alright, let's go 6. Strength 6, toughness 6, 6 wounds, initiative 6, 6 attacks. <laughs> it's just 6 across the board with an upside down 6 for the weapon skill. Alright, leadership 10. 2 plus save. He is a monstrous creature that's not an independent character. Just a character. We all have heard of the problems with that already. You cannot join units or go inside of transports and all that. So, Adamantine Will. He's an ultramarine for sure. Eternal warrior. Fearless. Feel no pain. Fleet. Precision shots. Precision strikes. And preferred enemy chaos. When we say chaos, we're of course talking about uh, chaos demons, chaos space marines of any kind, corn demon kin of any kind. So all those factions are encompassed in chaos. So see uh, what kind of special rules we got. So, friendly units from armies in the Imperium, reroll failed morale checks and fear and pinning tests when he's on the battlefield. Cool, so that's a battlefield wide ability there, pretty neat. You can choose to enact devastator, assault, and tactical doctrines once each per game in addition to your normal ones. And uh, when you use one of them, um, all ultra models in your army are affected. So not just detachment or formation specific, pretty cool. Uh, unyielding will reboot Gulliman's leadership is not subject to negative modifiers yes and he may reroll fail deny the witch test that's pretty sweet um, and he has oh that's pretty cool his warlord trait he gets all of them from the command traits uh, table in the 40k rulebook that's awesome all right uh, the emperor's sword let's see what his sword does strength 10 AP 1 Armor Bane, Concussion, Soul Blaze, Touch of the Emperor, Whirling Flame. What's Touch of the Emperor? Whenever you roll uh, 6 to hit, it's Resolve Strength D. Pretty sick. Uh, whirling Flame. Rather than making attacks normally, he can make uh, a number of attacks with his weapon against each enemy unit engaged in his combat. Equal to the number of models from that unit within 1 inch of him. Number of attacks with his weapon against each enemy unit. Ooh. Okay, so if a unit of 10 is engaged with him in combat, he gets 10 attacks against them. Um, seems like if there's also a unit of 5 in contact with him, he can make 5 attacks against them. Wow. Each enemy unit in his combat equal to the number of models from that unit within one inch of him. Or maybe you just pick one of the units. Uh, okay. So that's crazy. So so he's a lot harder to bog down. You can't just put a, a unit of 30 gots on him. Or else he's just going to get 30 attacks and probably just squish all of them. <laughs> that's awesome. Alright. Let's move on. Um, the Hand of Dominion. Uh, okay. Oh, so these are, yeah, the sword and his hand of dominion kind of go together. So it's the sword and the hand. Can also be used as a ranged weapon, right? So, so 24 inches of strength, 6, AP 2, assault through random. Ooh, that is nasty. Um, definitely a Terminator killer. And could even get light vehicles with that rending. Um, kind of just like a better assault cannon, kind of. Anyway. Uh, armor of Fate. Let's see what his armor does. Three, three up invuln. That's amazing. If he is slain, place a marker on the spot and uh, roll dice on a four or more. So four up. Uh, place him as close to the marker as possible, uh, more than one inch away from any me from any unit. So uh, him, uh, friendly or enemy, and he gets D three wounds. So that's pretty cool. So he kind of gets a get back to life thing, kind of like Celestine. Can't, can't kill this guy. Can't kill this guy. He's going to be tough, but he also he's going to have a hard time chasing you down. So he's killy for sure, but will he get there? Who knows? There he is, Reboot Gulliman. Guys, that's it for the unboxing of the Triumvirate of the Primarch. If you guys like that, make sure you subscribe in the link below. Just click the subscribe right there. Also, check us out on Patreon. That link is in our video description. We would love for you guys to support what we do here on YouTube. Um, just by having you guys support us. So if you like our bat reps, if you like our unboxings and strategy videos and tutorials and all that kind of stuff, definitely uh, subscribe and check us out on Patreon. And we'll see you at our next encounter.
like a monkey.